Big stories we're talking about in the big one today. We've had a traffic mess on the edge of downtown pretty much all morning. Just after 9 today, semi coming off southbound 71 into the tunnel and on the Fort Washington Way West fell out its side. It is blocking all four lanes of traffic. The semi was carrying a roll of steel. It really diverted traffic off 71 and 471 as you come into downtown. Instead of Fort Washington Way today, people have been using 3rd Street. They've been rerouting some of the traffic off 71 downtown on 6th Street. And there's been a lot of traffic troubles all through the heart of the city because of this accident. The truck driver was able to walk away. He wasn't hurt. It was just taking a while to get the truck removed from the crash scene. New car being produced in the tri-state. Amp electric vehicles dedicating their facility in Blue Ash today. Big opening with the governor in town, Congresswoman Jean Schmidt. They'll take cars that are already gas-powered, like the Pontiac Solstice for the Saturn Sky, and convert it into electric power. They're using batteries from Remy International. The conversion costs about $25,000. Right now, they're just doing two-door cars, but they have plans to do a four-door model soon in the future. Governor Strickland, we told you yesterday, was out in front in New Poll to win re-election. Today, Quinnipiac University in Connecticut releasing the results of a poll in Ohio on the race for Senate. And it looks like former local congressman Rob Portman has the edge. The Republican ahead against either of the two potential Democratic challengers right now. The same poll also shows a huge unfavorable rating for both the Democratic and Republican parties. Democrats have a 50% unfavorable rating in Ohio, according to this poll. Republicans just a little bit lower than that. More favorable than unfavorable ratings go to the Tea Party movement. The Quinnipiac University researchers say that could be a huge indication of how the fall vote just might go. Well, the Newport Pavilion project just off I-471 go the way of Kenwood Town Place. We've watched for two years now, waiting for some kind of progress on the Town Place project. Development stalled there as Bear Creek Capital ran into money problems. Bear Creek, same company that's been in charge at Newport Pavilion. Now we understand that they are being facing or being hit with some lawsuits there from contractors who say they haven't been paid for work on that new Kroger Marketplace store. There were supposed to be a number of new shops coming into that same development, but nothing's happened yet. No comment from Bear Creek on this. Since a Board of Education says they will not slow down construction of schools in the city. Ugly meeting earlier this week, the NAACP demanding construction stop until more minority contractors can be hired. The school board said that's not fair to the kids waiting to move into new schools. They are, though, promising to do a better job of finding minority contractors for the work. Should the Gamble House be torn down in Westwood? Today, demonstrators are going to be out on Work Road near McKinley in front of that house that used to belong to the son of P&G founder, James Gamble. The Gamble home had been built sometime in the early 1830s, it's believed. It's been on that property in Westwood for some time. used to be the home for the mayor of Westwood, a complete subdivision before it was incorporated into the city. The protesters think that the building should be preserved. The foundation which owns it, though, say it's in need of about a million dollars in repairs to be brought up to code in the city. They don't know that it's worth putting that money out to save it.